Hi, welcome everybody to this lecture demonstration, The Singer Inside Out. My name is Katrien van Opstal and I'm a researcher at the Royal Conservatoire of Antwerp. I'm also a teacher in vocal jazz and a jazz singer, of course. Well, currently I'm on the research project Clarifying Vocal Jazz from Insight to Practice, where I'm uh, developing explicit training tools for the jazz singer based on what is actually happening inside of the voice production system. This research is the follow-up of a two-year research style, sound and voice production system in vocal jazz and uh, where I investigated the relationship between the style of jazz and uh, what is actually happening in the voice production system. It will also have a follow-up, The Singer Inside Out, where I will clarify emotions, the pathway between emotions um, to the voice production system so we can use it in our songs. Um, in this lecture, you will get a notion of how the voice production system works and how to apply it to vocal jazz music. And you will also get a sneak preview of um, how, to, how we can also use emotions to really favor a specific voice production setup in our voice. So I hope you all enjoy it. Um, first, a little bit more of why research in vocal jazz is so much needed. Well, there are many styles in vocal jazz. You have uh, swing, you have bebop, you have bossa nova, you can go uh, all different directions, but yet there is not much literature about um, vocal jazz technique. Um, if, you, if, you get, uh, if you are taught in vocal jazz, you will probably have a lot of um, uh, learned from your teacher. It's mainly an oral culture. There's not much literature, so th there's not much tools to really help yourself um, get better and to really know um, to really know what you have to practice. So my story is that I did a lot of different projects. I was in a trio. I was in a big band. Um, I had a lot of different formations and a lot of different styles. So at the same time, you could be in an Ella Fitzgerald project and you could be in a Bossa Nova project. So I had a lot of stage anxiety due to the fact that I didn't understand what was going on in my voice. And if I had a good sound for this project or for that project, it was mainly a cause of coincidence. And I had no way how to, I didn't know how to repeat it. So um, I asked myself the question, okay, how am I doing this, literally? If I have a good sound, how am I doing this? So this was the foundation of this research and I hope with the outcomes that I can help more and more jazz singers to develop their voice the way they want to. I started my research um, from the Estill voice model. Joe Estill is a researcher, was a researcher, and a classical singer, um, which actually, she posed the same question to herself. She asked herself, how am I doing this? Now she went into the lab, she did a lot of measurements, and uh, she identified 13 structures that uh, make up a sound. So on the, on the figure in the, in the PowerPoint, you can see uh, some of these structures. I chose six of them to investigate vocal jazz. So I use this model, which combines kinesthetic awareness with oral perception. And it gives you the power to analyze a sound, to analyze what you are doing. It gives you the power to choose a sound, to train it and to repeat it. So I, this was a really good start for me. I uh, also used spectrographic analysis. Here you can see, um, here you can see a picture of a spectrographic analysis of a recording in the yellow square um, of um, three vowels, uh, E, A, U, on a low pitch in swing and on a high pitch in swing. In the red square, you can see the same vowels in bossa nova song. So you, this spectrogram visualizes the different frequencies that make up a sound and they give you a clue of how different the sound is made in swing and in a bossa nova song. At the, for instance, on the top, you can see the volume. So in, in swing, you have this decay kind of sound. It starts from loud and it goes to soft, like e, a, u. While in bossa nova, you have more a more even sound. 
Ki a u. So that is already one thing that you can uh, get from that. And also in the frequencies itself, you can see that in swing that the higher regions are more bright, which means there's more, act there's more activity there. This gives you a, a little clue about how much twang is used. For those who are familiar with, uh, with voice, they will know what twang is and maybe you will get a notion a little bit later. So from the outcomes, I got some clues about, um, about swing music, about bossa nova music, and I could develop specific exercises to really train the muscles that serve the vocal jazz singer most. But still, I didn't want to have it really rigid that for this style you have to do that. So I made up a tool which allows you to, um, which allows the singer to train his voice with all the different aspects that appear a lot in vocal jazz and to, at the same time, make the connection with how they feel with their own voice. And this model is called the mixing table model. Here it is. And, and it covers a lot of the singing styles in vocal jazz. Let's take a little look at it. Um, at the left side, you see speech. Um, speech is like just talking. It's saying one, two, three, four, five. And now you, for those who are really singing and are at home, I, uh, I, I um, invite you to, to just uh, try it at home. For those who don't sing, also try it because it's fun. And you will get to know a little how your voice feels. So let's just say one, two, three, four, five. And then you can sing with the same feeling. One, two, three, four, five. And feel what is going on and listen to, listen to how it feels. Listen to how it sounds. Um, yeah, if I would sing like that with the same feeling, it would be something like this. Summertime and the living is easy. Fish are jumping and the cotton is high. The weather is high. Um, so what is going on? If you dig deeper into speech, then um, you get this little, little uh, mixing table. What is really working when you're just talking, that's just your true vocal folds. You have this buzz here. Summertime and the living is easy. Everything else is kind of relaxed. You're not like, like this, or you're, you're not doing a lot. So it, it's only your two vocal folds are really working. Everything else is relaxed. Then if you go to falsetto, try to sigh. <sighs> yes. <laughs> if we sing like that, <sighs> you don't have this, this really buzz anymore here. So what is happening is that your two vocal folds are stiff they're like pulled stiff and they you don't have the waveform so you if you sing like this you get the summertime and the living is easy fish are jumping and the weather is high so that's falsetto then you have the cry oh let's take a, a little look at uh, falsetto more deep yeah so the only thing that's different between speech and falsetto are the true vocal folds that go from thick to stiff so now you already have a little feeling of how your true vocal folds feel, I hope. Um, then we have cry. You can cry like a, like a, like a cat. Meow, 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 meow. If you sing like that, you get summertime and the living is easy. Fish are jumping and the weather is high. Now this feels a lot different than in speech. I, you don't have the, the thick vocal folds. They're really, they're really thin. But I'm also, I'm, I'm more in my body anchoring. I did my tongue high. I tilted my thyroid. My, my throat is much wider. So you get a different recipe for cry. I'm not going into this in detail for those who are familiar with voice, they, they will have a clue of what this, what this is. But I'm sure that everybody can feel how speech, just talking, feels a lot different than crying. These are all different muscles that are used. And I think speech and cry are combined a lot in jazz. Like if you have swing, you will have a lot of A, A. You will have a lot of speech going to cry, which are totally different to do for the voice. So it's interesting and it's useful to build your vocal jazz technique on these things. Then what else do we have? 
We have the larynx. These are like little nuts to play with, the other, the other ones. We have the larynx hooking below. Summertime and the living is easy. Or in the mid. Summertime and the living is easy. Or really high. Summertime and the living is easy. So this also defines your sounds. Then you have on the right, you have the AES, which is, so, which, which is short for Airy Epiglottic Sphincter. That's a muscle who will um, uh, lower your epiglottis and give you a more narrow space. And it creates twang. And twang sounds like this. <coughs> so if your AES is like on zero, you have summertime and living is easy. But if you really narrow it, you get Summertime and living is easy. Fish are jumping and the weather is high. Uh, you, you can play, you, you can go from zero to 10, so you can, you, can play with, you can play with it. Then you have the torso, which is like, are you relaxed? Uh, are you really relaxed here? You get, summertime and living is easy. Or will you be more like, summertime and living is easy. So you can play with all these things and every, every, um, every different setup has, a, has, his, has its effect on your sounds. Um, but if you, if you exercise on all these things, then you have access to the whole scala of, uh, of possibilities of your voice. So this is a great tool, I think, to gain insight in the connection between sound and anatomy. Um, and it's also a good tool to really efficiently analyze what is going on. If you like a, a specific singer, you can really quickly analyze what she is doing. And you also you can choose how you want to do it. And then you can base your training on your choice and on what you want to do. You will train those muscles that will serve your music. So I hope you... you uh, I hope you have um, now a little notion about your voice. Maybe you discovered something, or maybe you will discover now if you listen to other singers, ah, she's doing that, or she's doing that. Um, now I wonder, I also wondered when I did my interviews and my workshop and my teaching, I wondered now how are these different sounds perceived for the listener? So this is what I came up with. These are the most answers I got, the, the answers I got the most. Um, if you sing in speech, it sounds authentical. It sounds warm, it sounds full, it sounds easy, sweet, but it also sounds depressed and bored. So you can have different, uh, different emotions accompanying speech. If you sing in falsetto, it sounds fragile, dreamy, shy, without punch, classical, and also relaxed. Now, if you sing and cry, it sounds light, but also sad. It can even sound dramatic, and somebody called it, it sounds Disney. <laughs> so that's how, how it is perceived if you sing like that. Now, what, I wonder, what I'm wondering now is, what if we go the other way around? So instead of starting from what we want as a sound and then from that sound choosing what we want to convey, why not start with the sound itself? So we go the other way around. We start with an, I'm sorry, what if we start with the emotion itself? So we start from an emotion and we see what it gives us in the voice. And I think that's a great exercise too and a great way to explore how you want to sing. So I like to work with this tool. It's called an emotional wheel. You have different versions on it. The internet is full of it. And it's a, it's a nice tool to really dig into the emotions. Um, it's fun to work with also. <laughs> it's really inspiring. So I, these are the, these are the emotions that were mentioned most when working with the mixing table model. But now let's go the other way around. And now we're going to do a little experiment. So uh, also for me, I chose 
three emotions and I'm going to try to feel them and convey them and uh, let's see what they um, let's see what they do to my voice and to my sounds. I chose this, the lyrics of the beautiful song The Gentle Rain by Louis Bonfa. The lyrics are from Matt Dubay and um, I'm just going to read them to you. We both are lost and alone in the world. Walk with me in the gentle rain. Don't be afraid. I have a hand for your hand and I will be your love for a while. So I chose three different emotions, a little bit random, a little bit to what I was up to. Um, let's start with energetic. If I'm like the energetic friend who will, you know, her friend is depressed, but I really want to help her. I'm like, oh, come on. We are both lost and we are both alone in the world. Don't be afraid. I have a hand for your hands. If I'm singing like with that emotion, how would I, how would it sound? So. We both are lost and alone in the world. Walk with me in the gentle rain. Don't be afraid. I have a hand for your hand and I will be your love for a while. So if you go to the mixing table model, how does it sound? We both are lost and alone in the world. To me, that's like a lot of speech, some twang, some AES, hey, and torso. I'm like in my body. Now I chose another dim emotion, hurt. If I'm really, really deeply hurt because I'm so alone in the world and it's just because of this awful thing that happened. How would it sound if I would read to you like that? We both are lost and alone in the world. Walk with me in the gentle rain. Don't be afraid. I have a hand for your hands and I will be your love for a while. If you go back now to the mixing table model, this was not speech. I think what I did here, to me that is cry. With a really low larynx. No, not really, with a low larynx. So you can imagine if I was crying, oh, it would sound like that. And also with the low larynx, oh, it sounds a little bit darker, a little bit heavier, a little bit older. And the third one I chose, is scared. I'm really scared because we are both lost and alone in the world and I'm, I don't know what to do. I don't feel my backbone. I, I'm really scared. So let's try. We both are lost and alone in the world. Walk with me in the gentle rain. Don't be afraid. I have a hand for your hands and I will be your love for a while. So I, re I really had no power. And I, I'm sure if you, if you are trying it at home or if you want to try it at home, you might have different outcomes, but this is my scared. And I think if I go to the mixing table model that I was mostly in facetto. No, I, I did prepare this a bit, so I, I, I know a little what I did. I um, think I was most in falsetto and this gave a different feeling to you, I guess. Hmm. Okay, so let's listen how this sounds in a song. Let's start with energetic. Hey, okay. We both are lost and alone in the world. Walk with me in the gentle rain. Don't be afraid of her hair.
So the second one was Hertz, I guess. So. So the third one was scared. It's really a roller coaster of emotions here. I'm scared and I feel really powerless. Because I'm so lost. We both are lost and alone in the world. Walk with me. Gentle rain. Don't be afraid of a hand for your head, and I will be your love for a while. I feel your tears as they fall on my cheek. They all walk. So again, a total different sound, and uh, though it was still me, <laughs> you could still recognize it was me, right? But it was a different sound, and I, I also felt different, and I, I guess you also had a different feeling at home while listening. So in, in when you're really in musical practice, you will, you will probably never choose one emotion for one song. No, you will choose sometimes two, three, four emotions for each sentence, sometimes for each word. So um, it's m much more a mixture than I demonstrated now. This was really to get really deep into this emotion and the connection to the voice and the sounds. Um, but as if you practice and you practice a lot of different emotions, different sounds, then you, you just clear the pathway between how you feel and your voice immediately responds to it and um, yeah I hope that way we will be better artists and we, we, will, we, will, we will be better in conveying emotions um, yeah that's mainly what I wanted to say yeah. <laughs> um, I will end this um, this demonstration this lecture demonstration by just singing 
the song Gentle Rain as I would sing it if I was in a performance. <laughs> We both are lost and alone in the world. Walk with me in the gentle rain. Don't be afraid of a hand for your hands, and I will. Feel your tears as they fall on my cheek. They are warm like the gentle rain. Come, little one, you have me in the world, and our love will be sweet, will be sad. Like the gentle rain, like the gentle rain, like the gentle I would like to thank you all for, uh, for watching this and for listening to this. If I, um, if I want to end with, uh, I would like to end with a picture. And um, if vocal jazz is like a beautiful forest with a lot of, a lot of places and corners to explore and to enjoy and uh, to choose also, I like what I'm doing, this research, I like this to be this. So you can get you can, you can really discover all the spots of your forest and you can go every place and you can choose where to reside. And uh, you can be all over the place. It's, it doesn't matter, but I hope I will give to you something that makes it um, easier to really explore the forest. I also really do believe that this is also a really interesting way of thinking for actors or for any singer or everybody who uses voice in their arts. So... Um, I hope we will meet again and I hope to discuss this more and more with a lot of people. Feel free to contact me, I would love that. And uh, I hope to see you on our next occasion. Big thanks to the technical crew of, uh, of uh, Royal Conservatoire of Antwerp. Thank you guys, you were great. And thank you all at home for watching. See you another time, bye. <laughs>